welcome to the PC Gamer Show for February 20th, 2020. Seeing clearly. Uh, I'm James Davenport, your host. Uh, I work at PCGamer.com. I have two other people here who also work at PCGamer.com. And we're going to talk about pretty much all the games in the world today. Uh, we got Tyler Wild. Uh, Tyler, say hello. Hello. How are you? Good. I took my vitamin. My alive men's <laughs> energy multivitamin, so Ooh. I should be full of men's energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it, please exhibit uh, all that man energy as you talk about. Uh, well, what are we talking about? Amazon's MMO, uh, New World, New World, yeah. uh, Chivalry Two. Yeah, so we got the sword game, the second one. <laughs> And man, yeah, and then Man Eater. It's like it's kind of a sword game, but the swords are in your mouth because you're a shark <laughs> and you have a lot of them. Rows and rows of swords. I love. Do you guys know about, about shark dentistry? Like uh, they, they Don't just their have, teeth just fall out and more just all the in. time. Yeah, it's just like a constant, just rows and rows of teeth that just constantly grow in. It's amazing. I feel like humans should be like that. Like you wouldn't have to worry about tooth decay if you just got new teeth every. Yeah, and I think kissing would be way better too. Um, <laughs> it's just like sometimes the tooth falls out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, who else is here that works at P- Chris Livingston? Is here who works at PCDamer.com. Please, please say hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. <laughs> and that was uh, a joke from 1920. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. It still gets me. Uh, 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 my dad, whenever I say. And he's passed it on to me when I say I'm I'm hungry. He does the hello hungry. I'm Joe, and I, I chuckle. And I will. I don't think it, I think I don't think I'll ever not chuckle at that kind of that kind of humor. So carry it on, Chris. Keep 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 it alive. Um, what are you? What games are you talking about today? I'm talking about Hard Space Shipbreaker, which is a game coming to early access this summer about cutting up derelict spaceships in space uh which i got to play a demo of last week um and also no man's sky which just released another free big weird uh update so that's what i'm talking about right on i am looking forward to both those some good space stuff going on uh in pc gaming uh, as usual um i was wondering because uh i'm geez i'm spacing the name of the uh hello games guy sean something sean murray sean murray yeah he's he was he's been tweeting about eggs for way too long uh without context and uh this is an update to no man's sky where you literally hatch a ship from an egg which hell yeah i'm all about that i i said i was into that and i want to have a bio ship but then chris said it was too gross or something and he doesn't want to fly around in a yeah, I like I'm not super a super fan of organic uh spaceships and things that are like that are like living but also mechanical like those things. Like I like looking at them, like they're kind of uh-huh. cool and I would yeah. shoot at them if that was an option. Um you know like in Half-Life 2, I don't really want to fly around on those weird things that are kind of part yeah. animal, part machine. Um they look cool, but I don't like want to sit in a living thing and hold on to tentacles while i'm driving yeah it's just kind of grody to me i gotta kind of always wonder like about the i don't know the uh moisture level and the smell uh, yeah I mean, it seems like it would be unpleasant for them too i mean uh-huh. it's not like really sitting on a horse and you're actually like in something it would seem like yeah humidity would be a problem uh well, you know maybe it's like probiotics you know like maybe mm. the human vessels are they're useful for the the creature help digest all that fuel yeah no it's like be just like climbing inside a whale or something kind of gross <laughs> oh man uh it's a school. classic move yeah, yeah. Sunday school implanted that kind of thought into my head way too early like at three years old what if you were living in a whale's mouth <laughs> <laughs> you know there's like that that fish and this parasite crawls into its mouth and Oh, eat yeah. tongue and then kind of becomes its tongue and they're like this symbiotic gross like doubly gross of a gross fish and a gross bug it just seems like uh yeah pass 
That's I also know. something that would make kissing better if we could add that yes. to human rows biology. Rows and rows of teeth and sort of like a parasite instead of a tongue. You just you just switch tongues. Yes. It just it crawls from one. Yeah. This, this is great. Okay. Taking notes. <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> um, why don't we talk about one of these games? Let's open up on, on the big one. Uh, well, it feels big. I don't know if it is. Um, or And there's there's plenty of interest around it, which I find kind of surprising. Uh, but anytime we publish a story about this, there's kind of a thirst for it. And this is Amazon's MMO. It's just called New World. It is. Good yeah. It, um, that, you know, what you've uh, sort of identified there has been kind of interesting. Um, I've been one of the main people covering it. And since it was announced and we posted like some screenshots, people were like all over the screenshots. <laughs> they were really yeah. curious about this game. And we were kind of like, okay, well, why is that? And I think, I think there just is a hunger for like a sort of classic style MMO that's new. Um, and it does have these sort of interesting big PVP war territory capture kind of ideas. Um, but it is also, you know, not coming out in early access, not exactly a survival game, just, you know, an MMO with swords and bows and magic. And it's made by a company with a shitload of money, Amazon. And so I think the expectation is like, I'm not really sure what it is. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in it too, uh, partially because the interest is so high. But I think just the pitch of like, they're not promising like to change the meaning of MMO forever. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of promising a game that's going to work and hopefully be pretty fun and should have like pretty good good servers <laughs> like it it's got so much money behind it i think right. people just are assuming or expecting there's going to be a level of of quality to it that um, maybe they have felt is kind of missing from from the mmo genre which if you can call it a genre <laughs> te technically it's it's you know just relates to how many players there are but we all know there is kind of a world of warcraft guild wars genre yeah, and I, I suppose um, I, I can I can I can feel that I can get that it's a kind of a comfort food, this kind of game. Like I, you know, I've I've brushed up against a couple MMOs in my long storied life, and for the most part, they all are they all they are articulate in in different ways, but they uh, broadly feel the same and 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 uh, and uh, unfold similarly. In terms of the combat and and the structure, you know, there are the combat is often that real time hot bar, uh, uh, cool skill cooldown kind of um, optimization. Um, and well, James, this time the hot bar it's <laughs> yeah. not your number keys. Okay, it's letter keys. So. Oh, baby! <laughs> no, that, that's funny MMOs. Well, that's that like, is a simplification. The, the combat is not your typical MMO combat. So that's okay. one of the main, main things that's different. Um, I suppose uh, before before we we dig into like how that's different, um, I also want to say, I, I think what really really i guess what the success of this this game i think will hinge upon and what people i you know as an mmo player casually over the last two, almost two decades i think what i look for is just a good setting and competent combat you know a cool world competent combat and and nice social features or you know an incentive to play with other people and um wow is great at that for the most part you know and uh, uh final fantasy 14 is pretty good at that great story and and, and some good optional social stuff D do you feel like i think we need to know before we get into like what the combat is and everything else what is the setting here what's like the pitch uh because i at a glance i am not taken in by this like <laughs> new world colonialist fantasy world yeah i have a hard time just kind of getting excited about it uh in those terms you you are 
sort of uh, age of exploration person who I guess has gone out to enslave and exploit people, but somehow you end up on a uh, a weird island. Uh, oh, your, your your ship wrecks and you're on the beach and there's an NPC hanging out there ready to give you quests. Um, <laughs> this island has a magical mineral on it, which causes all kinds of fun things like it corrupts uh, previous settlers and makes them monstrous and it turns nature into sort of your your dryad kind of beasts and, and your your forest magical forest creatures who sort of defend the island and then of course there's a lost ancient civilization which oh, yes. um, which equals uh ruins and skeletons who defend the ruins um <laughs> so you you and the other people who've come to this island are vying for power for resources for control but there is a story to it there there is some sort of a villain um you know you can do magic because of this sort of magic mineral resource that exists on the island um but you can also use a rifle um okay there are there are bows there are swords so uh, when i talked to them they they kind of you know, brushed aside sort of like the historical context of their of their setting to say basically what they liked about it was the the time periods mix of technology where you have gunpowder, sure. but uh, bows and arrows and swords are still kind of your primary combat tools. So guns are just kind of coming in at the periphery and like, which is when you actually play the game, these rifles are like hit scan <laughs> weapons. So actually they are not like shitty muskets. They're they're pretty good, but they made them that way because they needed to differentiate them from bows, which you know right. shoot in an arc. So if the guns were kind of the same as the bows, you know, why have both? But uh, you know, and and there is something interesting about that sort of I, I don't know. I mean they could have just made it a steampunk thing, but they chose <laughs> they chose like conquistador armor for some reason which i don't find like i've never in an mo been like man i wish i had uh, like a tricorn hat or a conquistador sort of thing. so I, i'm not sure why they chose the aesthetic they did to be honest like if they had just gone i guess you get you get pirates out of that out of this sure. age so pir pirates are cool okay well uh i don't know like do, do you feel having played so you you played it Yes, and, and kind of talk to these folks. What? Yeah, broadly, like, what are you? How are you coming away from it? Um, and uh, you know, with this context of the setting and thirst for sort of a new uh, vanilla is maybe reductive, but just a cozy MMO. Uh, do you think this is gonna make a splash? It, it it felt like something I'd give a chance okay. to play. Um, the the interface is really good they um they used to have sort of more survival elements in the game which hmm. which got cut um like thirst hunger um now you know you can you can still cook food but it's it's a buff instead of like a requirement gotcha. um but it does have that survival game like you know make an axe cut down a tree make oh. a pick hit hit a boulder huh. you know coll collect materials um but like the way the interface works is just so uh, frictionless like once you've crafted your axe it's just there in, in, mm -hmm. in your inventory you don't have to move it around or touch it you just walk up to a tree you press f your character pulls the axe out cuts down the tree all the wood goes in your inventory and then he puts the axe away you know it's they really just streamlined that stuff we've done a million times like clicking <laughs> thank goodness to cut a tree and you punch the tree you uh, don't you do, start you need you need an axe um i think i okay. could be wrong so to get wood to make the axe you like gather twigs and things from bushes oh, so they've right. they've they've solved you know the tree the chicken or the eggs sorry Chris. Thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are the um like character classes like are there are they pretty standard or they so they, 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 they archers and stuff yeah, they have standard like uh, RPG stats, like your strength and your. It doesn't go 
uh, like into the level D and D what it does with like charisma and stuff. But you have okay. like your strength and your agility. Strength is good for melee weapons. Agility is good for ranged weapons. Um, but there's no classes, so as you use a weapon, um, you unlock uh, mastery. Well, you unlock skills in what they're calling a mastery tree. So that could be like an active skill, like you spin your sword around in a circle, which everyone who has a sword has to do <laughs> in a in a game to to hit lots of enemies. Um, or it could be like an archery skill where you have like an area of effect barrage. Um, so yeah, you just get those as you use a certain kind of weapon, and then as you level up, you adjust your stats. Um, but the the combat. You know, it's kind of this mix of like RPG stat based and skill based. Um, like, if you're level one, someone who's level sixty, if you want to do PVE, would would probably um, just destroy you in one hit. But if you're if you're really moving around and keeping your block up, um, it is like a you know hitbox based combat where you have to. Get your sword into into contact with their model. It's it's not the uh, sort of old old MMO style combat, which came from those text based muds and, and right. things where it's like you just decide who you're going to attack, and then it scrolls by like you hit them, they hit you, you hit them. <laughs> um, you, you can dodge roll out of the way. Uh, you have to aim your your arrows and, and your guns. So okay. Yeah, so there's definitely like you can get good at the combat. I think you could get pretty good at it and be annoying. Um not not in the same way like if you play Mord Howe or something. It's not right. it's not a it's not first person blocking, parrying, fainting. It's it's throwing like a combo of two light swings, maybe a heavy swing to break a block and then hitting hitting it a key to to throw out a special ability now and then, and they have pretty long cooldowns. Um, so yeah, it's not like Absolver. If that's, you know, you're still kind of cameras pulled out a ways. Um, uh, but I, I found it fun, the combat. Okay. Um, and, and then, you know, there's all this stuff where you can form a company and you can take over a fort and, you know, build up the settlement in the area by, by upgrading it with these sort of public projects that's where you would send people out to go pickaxe at boulders and get lots of materials mm. okay and i can see that fun um what's interesting sort of is that you don't have to participate in this sort of i want to a company is just a guild really you don't have to participate in that for it to affect you like oh. if i really like one part of the world and, and i buy a house in that settlement and I can fast travel to that house, and I use the crafting gear in that settlement. The the quality of that crafting gear, what I can make from it, I mean, it really depends on who, who's running that territory. Are they, um, you know, encouraging these public projects to improve the crafting gear? Are they upgrading the settlement, making it bigger, more like a town? Um, did they just get attacked by another company that uh, has has? or that another company has taken over the territory and, you know, raised the tax rate. So I, I can, as a player who's just kind of doing things on my own, be affected by this politics and this PVP stuff, um, even if I don't directly participate, which I, I think is cool. Yeah. Um, I, I could I could get really mad at the new sort of governor, player governor of my territory and be like, we need to rally 50 people to take these guys down because I'm tired of them. So I think there will be incentive for players who are kind of like, eh, I just do PvE, I just kill monsters, I go with a group to kind of raid um, tough areas. There might be a time in their sort of career as a player where they go, actually, you know, I want to get involved with this because it's affecting me and it's pissing me off, right? So I want to get, <laughs> I want to raise an army and, and that sort of analogy, the sort of wrong time period, but the sort of medieval idea that like when people get pissed off, you know, a noble can just go and be like, oh, I'll raise my own army and I'll be king now. Um, 
which happened quite a bit. I've been reading about the the history of ancient Russia, <laughs> and man, they loved doing that. Every time there were like three siblings who were in line to be king, they would yeah. all go get a different army <laughs> and go kill each other. <laughs> Sibling story, <laughs> damn. Yeah, they loved doing that stuff. So we'll see how it pans out. You know, you, you can tell me about these cool systems all you want, but like. It only, you know, we only get to see how it works when you have a server full of people right. doing it. Because it's also possible that everyone goes, "I don't care," <laughs> and like, "Yeah, I just want to, I just want to go fight uh, undead pirates and stuff." Um, you when, just don't know till, till it's live, right? Right. And when is there like a, a big beta phase coming up, or uh, do we know the timeline for this thing? Because I've been hearing about it for, we've been hearing about it for a while. Yeah, it's been a few years. Um, there's a beta in April. Okay. Um, and it'll be out in May. And it'll be forty dollars on Steam, no subscription or anything. I think I mean I think that's part of why Oh damn. I think it could be pretty successful. Cause again, here's like a new MMO, kind of some of that crafting survival y stuff people like, but without not being, you know, making you drink water every five minutes. <laughs> it, it's forty dollars. Um I think they might just sort of hit a time and a price where people are like down to try it out yeah. and get into it. We're between big WoW expansions. We're between uh, big Final Fantasy fourteen expansions. We're kind of, yeah, there's not much else going on. You know, the games that are maybe similar or appeal to, to uh, people who play stuff like Destiny 2, big ongoing games, they're also sort of between big moments. And I don't know that many other... Well, we got a couple big games coming out, uh, but uh, they are kind of once and done uh, dealio. So, yeah, I I, I mean, like, hey, the no subscription fee thing is has me perking my ears and wanting me to go chop wood and take over fort with uh, you folks. (laughs) Sounds sounds like a good hangout. It could be fun, but I think you're right that like the world and whatever kind of built in story there is will do a lot you know a lot of players just want to experience a cool world so we'll, we'll see. see how that pans out yeah. cool um let's move on to let's 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 go back and forth here i want to hear about this game uh shard space hit breaker chris tell me more about this uh hit breaking simulator in space what's going on with the uh, are you saying hit breaker sh- 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 shard space hip breaker hard space shard sparred <laughs> Sparch are you space. joking or are you having a stroke? <laughs> are you saying shark space? Shark space? Uh, shark no, space talk to me about hard space <laughs> shipbreaker. You, this is a, a fascinating game. Really lovely look. We've got, by the way, we've got previews for all these up on on the on uh, PCGamer.com uh, and a nice little video uh, Chris put together that demonstrates what this game is. But uh, tell us what it is. Um, yeah, so this was uh, just announced this week. Uh, Prior to the announcement, I got to play a demo of it. Um, this is from Blackbird Interactive. They're developers of uh, Homeworld 2 Deserts of Karak. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this is kind of a, a cool concept that like, kind of, I didn't really know would interest me so much until I like heard about it. But the idea of you're kind of this blue-collar worker in outer space, uh, at the space station orbiting earth it's a first person uh game and uh your job is basically to cut up these derelict spaceships that have returned from their final voyage and are kind of being scrapped for parts so you've got like this welder you're you're floating around in zero g not a welder uh like a plasma cutter and you're you're floating around in a space spacesuit in zero G and you basically um, have to take these ships apart and kind of process and salvage what you can. Um, And these are procedurally generated ships. So they have different configurations. Um, You know, the, you can peel kind of peel layers off it. You can salvage things from inside and the ultimate goal is to kind of make money to pay back this massive debt that you're in from just getting this job. You basically (laughs) leveraged yourself to the hilt just to work for this um, ship salvaging company, which is kind of interesting. Like 
because I noticed when I was playing it, it was like, you know, in the in any game with kind of money or management of money or making money, you reach this point sometimes where you're like, you slip into debt and you get these red numbers on the screen. And it's like, <laughs> it's like this, oh shit, how am I going to get out of debt? This game, you start like in a massive amount of debt, <laughs> which is, which is really kind of interesting and Life kind sim. of appropriate for, yeah, for our times. But you're, you know, even if you have this great salvage, like you just chipped away some of this debt. And I think that's kind of an interesting take on things. Um, yeah, I love I love that. Uh, it's just a bold statement from the start. And I'm so curious how that, you know, we'll get into what this game is actually about and like how it plays. And it looks good just from that, like a functional standpoint. But I think it, there's a big opportunity to uh, just like tell, make some interesting commentary on on uh on hard labor <laughs> and and uh corporate yeah and there's and there's things like if if you if your suit runs out of oxygen you have to you can salvage some from the ship and use it but if you can't find any you have to go to this kiosk and actually buy it from the company you work for um you have to buy the air that you need to complete your job so yeah there's, oh there's definitely some some very uh using your script at the uh, company oh. store yeah, they do. And also to like upgrade your tools and stuff, you have to get these credits from oh, this company that can only be used to purchase stuff from them. So yeah, there's this kind of like corporate take that it's I find not, interesting. Not nearly as bad as being a spaceship miner, but that reminds me of when I had like uh retail or food service jobs where they make you buy yeah. your uniform that you have to wear. It's like fuck you. <laughs> shoes. I I had to buy a bunch of shoes and yeah, it was when I was working to cook. Yeah. <laughs> worst anyway. this makes me think you're like the guy from uh dead space before he took his last <laughs> that's a good way to pitch it there you go um yeah so so yeah you're kind of presented with these procedurally generated ships and like the demo i played only had one ship but my understanding is um at the start of your your work day your work shift you are presented with a choice of ships that you bid on like i'm going to bid on on the salvage for this particular ship. Um, and you can use your scanner to kind of get a look at the innards. There's this um, kind of unbreakable, uncuttable steel skeleton, but there's these um, vulnerable points in each ship that you can cut with your, with your laser and that can open up the side of it. And then you can start bringing things out the side. Um, there's a, a physics simulation happening there so you know if the ship is pressurized you can go in through the airlock safely but if you screw up or you accidentally open a hatch the whole thing can decompress and these physics objects will go flying around into space they can slam you against the side of the ship or knock you away from the ship um, there's fuel lines and coolant lines that you have to be careful not to cut or it'll lead to this chain reaction of explosions and damage and um, the, the, the ultimate heart of each ship is the reactor that you want to very carefully, uh, first, you know, cut away everything in its way and then figure out a way to get it out of the, the ship and into your salvage barge before it goes critical, which uh, happens very quickly. And it's, um, incredibly explosive. You can, you can blow up the entire ship and it, it'll just be shards of, of, uh, destroyed material that you fail to salvage and you might be dead by the way if you die um this corporation has a copy of your dna on file so they <laughs> will clone you but then they will charge you for the clone oh my god um so it's fun it's like it's got a good sense of humor there's there's a really cool physics simulation in there um there's you really have to be on your toes like several times i either had forgotten that the ship was was uh, oxygenated and like i would just open something and get sucked out because of the decompression other times i would uh, decompress the ship using the ship's controls so that wouldn't happen but then i would forget that i'm running out of oxygen um so you kind of have to kind of be on your toes and like in the 15 minute demo you could salvage a lot of this ship, but there are some much bigger ships. Uh, the developer showed me some examples of bigger ships and different configurations and things that would take hours to kind of come up with a plan and and strip all the parts out. And um, yeah, it was a, it was just a little slice that I played, but I'm definitely it was felt really promising. I there's something really appealing about the idea of of cutting things up in space with a with a big ass laser. 
Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a really cool concept. It looks great. Um, oh my gosh. Yes. It's got a great played, style. So. That UI is just, I love the UI so much. Um, yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice looking game. I like the, the idea that, you know, you can, you can tackle these ships in different ways and, and, you know, there's there's multiple ways to do it it's not like it's sort of like a, a puzzle but there's many different solutions uh so yeah it, it it's fun and i'm looking forward to to more of it it's headed to steam early access um this summer we don't know exactly when but it will also be uh at pax east uh so if anyone out there is planning to attend you should stop by their uh, by their table yeah uh and we'll be have so at Speaking of PAX, I guess I should have plugged this at the top of the show, but I'll be there uh, along with Games Radar. We're hosting, we're official partners with PAX, I guess. So uh, we'll be streaming Friday and Saturday, uh, splitting the time up between Games Radar and PC Gamer uh, for most of the time the show floor is open. And the Hard Space folks will be on the show and we'll be chatting with them and um. I don't know if we'll be playing the demo live or if we're just going to be just chatting and talking over B-roll, but either way, we'll be talking about uh, this fascinating, extremely PC game, uh, if I do say so myself. I think it's just like totally fits our platform and sort of heritage. But yeah, uh, awesome. Thanks for thanks for the deep dive, Chris. Go check out his preview. It's, it's you know, it digs into all these details in more uh, clarity and uh, that video is just a nice flavor uh gets the flavor across pretty well uh let's talk about uh the sword game we got it we got it we got we got some stuff to get through still uh tyler you played chivalry 2 uh and give us give us like a primer on this i guess the subgenre overall <laughs> game. yeah i mean it. i think it was uh 2012 that chivalry medieval warfare came out um and it was sort of this surprise hit um because i'm not sure i don't want to say that this didn't exist that like first person medieval warfare with with swords and siege weapons i don't know i don't know what other game would would have been like that but it was 32 players and it it, it was exciting and um mordhau came out of that fans of that game made mordhau which is really similar um so chivalry 2 is sort of the folks that originated this like big multiplayer uh knights and archers and you know horses and uh uh, siege weapon combat um sort of coming back and and creating their own sequel that um i played for a while i didn't get to play like a big objective based map which are now 64 players um I just played team deathmatch, but I, I had a blast. I really didn't want to stop, uh, you know, cutting people's heads off with swords. It, it It's fun. It's fun to do that. It sure is. And so I think, I think what's important to distinguish here is sort of uh, a lot of people might have played Mordhau because it certainly it blew up big time. Um, how would you distinguish kind of what chivalry, who chivalry two is for versus Mordhau and sort of, how the sword combat just on a, on a basic level uh, functions differently. Yeah. I wouldn't say that they're going after different people. Like, Oh, right. if you're this kind of person, you'll like more how, and if you're this kind of person, chivalry too, will be your thing. They are both, you know, going to feature these big objective, you know, siege, the castle maps, um, both can be played in first person. Um, so there's going to be like subtle differences. Um, chivalry too in alpha right now so it's not final but it does look quite a bit better which you'd expect from uh torn banner which has been working on this for a while um uh, and and the sword fighting um is going to have sort of nuanced differences uh, both of them have a lot of ways to swing around a sword um both of them by default uh bind like mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down to attacks which is not typical um but when you have swords, there's a lot of way to swing swing them around. Um, so I found Chivalry 2, based on my time with it and then coming home and playing Mordhau right after, so I could try to like hold it in my mind. It's hard when I can't just sit and play them one after the other. Um, I found it 
slightly more methodical. Um, you know, when you're playing Mord How and someone goes to strike you, you want to like tap the right mouse button right before they hit you to to deflect it. You know, that's how you block. And in Chivalry 2, you can you can just hold up a guard and, and you will guard um, if you've sort of got your sword in the right place or shield. Um, but after you're hit while guarding, you know, they're going to have advantage on the next attack and you'll need to move out of the way or reorient, you know, your your, your block or, or slip in a jab or, you know, do any number of things to try to regain advantage because they have it at that point. Um, so as a shorthand, they kind of gave us as like the person who attacked and hit last, even if it was block, has advantage on their next attack. Mm -hmm. And what you're trying to do is, you know, turn that advantage around. And so sort of one-on-one -on -one sword fights are this, uh, you know, dance of trying to sort of smoothly counter and, and reclaim advantage and then lose it and then gain it back. Um. Of course, you've got like a bunch of other people swinging swords, people shooting arrows at you. Um, so <laughs> at least as I was learning and I didn't play long enough to, to really get any good at it, it was a lot of also just like my teammate's great sword just cut my head off. Whoops. Um, <laughs> I, or I just cut my teammate's head off or I just killed the guy because I swung at this guy. Happy accidents. And I, and I yeah, I, I spun my mouse around to try to give it more force and there was a guy outside of my peripheral vision who I turned into, and now he's dead. Um, so, you know, they the, they kind of want it to feel like a bar fight. I think they've uh, <laughs> they've succeeded. You know, based on what I played, it is this sort of chaotic, just doing anything you can to to get a swing in. But at the same time, I do think like if you just sat and played this one on one, it, it is a pretty nuanced. Uh, sword fighting simulation i think that outside of these big objective based battles you could have a lot of fun just challenging someone to a duel and uh um i look forward to sort of trying to become good at this sword fighting that is kind of intentionally chaotic intentionally like a, a bar fight but also pretty nuanced like if you hit control to duck for instance and hit a directional key you'll sort of bob in that direction. Um, you look sort of like a boxer, you know, who's who's bobbing and weaving. And, you know, the directionality of your of your duck could be the sort of one inch difference between getting the sword to the face and, and escaping it. So yeah, uh, it's I mean, you, it's, 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 it's a hard game to talk about. Um, because so much of it, these, these, these games in general, I think are about how they feel in 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 your hands and even watching them uh we put together a video preview as well so you can go check that out um even watching it it's kind of hard to understand like what inputs and like uh are happening and like how yeah. how like a battle is playing out there's a language to these games that doesn't come across unless you've you've or it doesn't come across easily unless you've played them you um, definitely feel it yeah when, when you're playing it but it is hard even after having played it and then watching the video, I was trying to like remember, like, wait, what is happening there? Because there's is that a fate? There's know. these <laughs> contextual animations, right, where it's like I've thrown a hit. Um, okay, so what did I do to do that? I clicked the left mouse button and I moved the mouse left to try to speed it up. But then, okay, they've blocked it. So now there's a moment of animation where I'm being blocked. And when you're playing it, you kind of know when your control returns and when you can sort of start another strike um, and how it all works, but just watching it. Yeah. It, it can be hard to tell like what's, what was a piece of input? When did they input it? And what was sort of an animation as a result, you know, you almost want to see on the screen, like an overlay of a keyboard and mouse that's showing when <laughs> someone's pressed something. Otherwise it's hard to sort of say, but it felt, it felt really fun when I was playing it, like I, I felt like I was pretty quickly able to smoothly sort of start a strike from over my right shoulder and be like, nope, and switch it to the left. And yeah. at the same time, you know, if I'm blocking that, try, trying to deal with that is, is tricky, but you can do it. Like I, it, it does feel like there's a pretty high ceiling to the, to the skill you could have at this. Um, but at the same time, like the original, 
chivalry. It is it's goofy. Like you can just hit a key to yell. Um, you can you can throw your weapon if you just that's how you decide to end a fight. You can pick up a chicken and throw it. Um, you know your arm can get cut off, and you can keep trying to just punch <laughs> with your with your the arm you have left. Um, so. Yeah, it it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's kind of they 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 reference like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings battles. Is I'll just say it's not trying to be historically accurate to right. the uh, <laughs> medieval period. It's trying to be like a big Hollywood medieval battle. Um, cool, and it seems to be getting getting there. So um, it's uh, I don't know when it's out. They haven't said except for sometime this year, probably. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm super curious. So it's good to know that the the basic melee combat systems are feeling good. It's going to be super interesting to see um, the big battle stuff, siege weapons and objective based modes and uh, horse kicking. <laughs> and yeah, so you, on. yeah. Mounted the mounted combat has 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 improved, and that horses can now kick forward and backward. They oh, made that clear in in the fact sheet. But yeah, what, what distinguishes it really from uh, more at how will be the two things like the the nuanced specifics of how the sword and, and I should say also axe and pole arm etc combat works and then how these maps are designed um, are the objectives more interesting than sort of your TF2 stand behind a battering ram and let it move up the field like I don't, I don't know if they've done anything different with that sort of design because they didn't they didn't show off those maps but uh, I'm really curious to see. Cool. Yeah, go to pcgamer.com, see some video uh, and uh, more in-depth preview from Tyler. Uh, all right, back to spaceships. Let's let's talk about those eggs again, uh, Chris. Th- there's kind of a surprise uh, update to No Man's Sky, and uh, you've been dinking around in there. It's not just spaceship eggs, though. Uh, break down what's new and uh, how you're uh, liking it so far. Yeah, so, you know, obviously the main appeal is this, these new biological ships. The eggs, um, I guess they were added, <coughs> the eggs, them, sorry. The eggs themselves were added uh, recently and no one quite knew what the what they were for. There was sort of a, a little mission you could complete, a um, little mystery, but it was never really solved until this day came along. And it turned out the eggs were... Uh, something you could eventually grow and mature into a spaceship. Um, But along with those, there are some, I guess they're calling them points of interest, which are things you can discover within uh, seemingly any solar system you visit. Um, I've been flying around there for the, you don't know, probably a few hours now. Uh, What you do is you just travel around a um, solar system, like between planets at pulse, speed which is like not light speed but very right. fast and you'll uh, randomly receive a little notification that there's an anomaly or there's a strange radio signal or something interesting and if you drop out of out of your pulse speed um there will be something there and it could be a guy in a spaceship who wants to sell you some stuff which is nice because uh previously you would have to go to a planet or a space station and use or your base and use a kiosk or a vendor and now it's like hey there's just a guy here and maybe he'll buy some of the crap that i've been carrying around on my ship or he'll sell me something interesting um i got some weird artifacts i don't know what they're for yet they might just be things to trade but they're extremely valuable uh you might it might be a distress call a couple guys have asked for help repairing their spaceships um it might be something else like a a destroyed freighter, uh, which were previously you could find on a planet surface, like a crashed freighter. Right. Um, now they're kind of just in space. I haven't found anything valuable on them. You can't land on them. Um, there's no EVA from your spaceship, but they're just kind of there, these huge hulking ruined ships. Um, and then there are some stranger things that I found. Um, like weird energy beings that want to talk to you briefly um <laughs> and say something mysterious it's Ooh. it's kind of star trekky it'll just be like this enormous sort of energy orb 
uh, with a strange name that will say a few things to you over the radio. Uh, it's not, I don't think anyone knows what these things are, if they're just sort of little distractions or if they play a greater role in No Man's Sky, but it's kind of nice that instead of just going from planet to planet and system to system, there's these little kind of things to kind of break up your trip. If you want to stop and investigate, maybe you'll find some weird uh, alien entity or, uh, you know, a new vendor or a giant floating space skull that's so big (laughs) you can fly your ship through it, which I found this morning. Um, So, yeah, and I've been looking at some of the other things people have found and, you know, despite doing this for several hours last night and a few hours this morning, like people are finding some really weird, interesting things out there. And no one quite knows if they're, if there's more to them than just, Oh, this is a weird thing. Um, or if they're tied into something greater, but I think we'll hopefully find out. Gotcha. Can, can you land on the uh, skull or is it just sort of a space ornament? No, I, I tried to land. I couldn't find any kind of landing. Uh, spot uh there were some weird crystals in there sort of floating in there that looked different than anything i'd seen but none of my ship's beams or rockets or anything could tear them apart i don't know if i just didn't have the a strong enough weapon or a special enough weapon maybe you need a living ship to vomit on them i don't know <laughs> um, maybe you need the guy from the other game to, to, play, to go in going. Yeah, I need the welder. I need the welder from Shipbreaker. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely lots of new weird stuff, which is great. Which is you know always a reason to come back to No Man's Sky is in the hopes of finding something that you've never seen before and and didn't know was there. Um, that's always you know all these updates are are really cool. All the the stuff they've added to the game, things to do, activities and missions. But for me, it's for me the the main appeal is to like go somewhere and just find something that is new and different, even if it doesn't do anything, just right. just a planet that looks completely different than anything or something in space that's new and kind of surprising. I, I've i never really gotten into the base building and no. staying put and stuff. I just want to like fly around and see weird stuff. And now there's, there's a lot of new weird stuff there to check out. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, like from day one, I, I wasn't really mad at No Man's Sky. I, 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 I thought it was a really good, just space travel visualizer put on some good music in the background and just go and this sounds like just an expansion of that universe uh and the things you'll see so hell yeah uh but also you know since then if you've been in the dark that a lot of great multiplayer features have been added and and like the crafting stuff and the excuse me the uh the ways you can get around the universe and, and, and and all that has expanded quite a bit in a big way it's you know, I, 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 I'm honestly still surprised that we're talking about No Man's Sky. How many years has it been? It was 2016, so this will be this will be the fourth fourth anniversary, I guess, this summer mm-hmm. in August. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Um, you know, we're still we're still talking about. It. They're still obviously working hard on it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, what a hell of a turnaround and uh, trajectory. So, uh, a classic space game, if I do say so myself. Now, uh, cool. Uh, that is live now go check it out and i believe you're you're putting together an article on stuff you're running into is that correct yeah I'm, i'll have something posted probably cool. tomorrow i'm going to do a little video of the stuff i've found in space cool. and also an accompanying article so you can check it out and see what you're missing and you know i think a lot of people who who bought it way back when and were like yeah i enjoy it but you know have some issues like i think it, it's always great to have a like an excuse to jump back in and be like, I'm going to fly around for a few hours and, and see what's up. So I think it's a, it's always after an update, even if you're not like a diehard no man's sky player, it's, it's always a great time just to pop in and see what's new. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Uh, final preview, uh, (laughs) of the week. It's that, it's that, it's that pre E three stretch where, where the preview events just, uh, so trickling Between out the previews yeah. and all of the leaks <laughs> yeah. that come out that ruin like, everything uh-huh uh it, it's the busy season it's uh, about to it's kicking off it has kicked off it's gonna be wild um man eater this is a, a tripwire is it developed by tripwire too or is it pu- just published it, it is okay. it um it wasn't initially created by uh tripwire but they they bought it um 
they bought the IP, as you'd say, in the biz, which is um, something, something they've done before, actually, from this person who I believe created Killing Floor, and they bought that from him, and then he went and made something else cool, uh, and they bought that from him. Uh, so they have a pretty good relationship. <laughs> um, <laughs> With with this uh, this guy who keeps coming up with good ideas, selling them, and then going to do something else. But uh, it is a game about being a shark. Cool. Which there are shockingly few of. I know there's more <laughs> than just 2006 classic Jaws Unleashed, um, but that's the one that came to mind when I was uh, checking this out. If you've never played it, Jaws Unleashed is not terrible, surprisingly. Uh, but yeah, you know, you're a shark and it's sort of an RPG in that you can, uh, level up and <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it is not, um, not exactly true to nature in that you can like, uh, you can like add a bony exoskeleton to like bust up fishing boats. You can get like bioelectric skills. Um, there, there's like a tree that they called like sort of vampiric. I don't know what that means. What? Maybe you, All right. you you get health by you can be a vampire shark. Ca- awesome. Well, <laughs> I don't think they I don't think they put it in like that clear of terms, but I they mean, did use the word vampiric. So I mean, look, tuxedo, I'll just say it here. Cape. You can be a Dracula shark. Uh no, probably not. But you can get abilities that have some sort of stealthy, sort of vampiric nature to them. So you know sci-fi channel has a vampire shark movie they do do they they have to they must they must they have a shark keep talking i'm gonna google this i I believe that i believe you that vampire shark um but why would a shark need to be a van already just kills anyway sharks sharks are very cool and they don't kill that many humans so keep that in mind uh (laughs) um but yeah it's it's kind of a, a tough thing right because it is fun to jump out of the water and eat a person And you can do that, and you're encouraged to do that, and that's fun for a while, but you kind of start to wonder, like, okay, well, what's sort of the meat of this game? Uh, (laughs) Well, human is is some of the meat, but so there is, you know, combat as a shark when you're underwater. Like, there are these apex predators, there's a big sperm whale, there's a giant alligator or crocodile. I can never remember which one is which, but uh, and they sort of said it was it was kind of punch out like and that like you're fighting something big you know it'll have a tell that it's going to go into a big attack so you got to dodge it swim around and attack um i didn't quite get in a pretty brief preview session to, to any big fights but i will say i did just kind of enjoy swimming around in a really really pretty underwater environment and uh Chris Parnell narrates everything as if it's a nature documentary. Um, I, I, I didn't like sort of get to any great gags or anything, but if you're going to have someone talking in your ear for the duration of sort of a 15 hour single player shark game, I think you, you could do worse than Chris Parnell. He's a funny guy. He's got a pleasant voice. It's just nice. Nice to hear. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there is sort of a story to it. Um, having Chris Parnell narrate was their solution to like, well, sharks don't talk. So how, how do we make this a character? So it's framed like it's a reality show, like deadliest catch or something. And, and you <laughs> okay. have a, you have a shark hunter nemesis who, who's of course trying to kill you. And, and you have Chris Parnell narr- narrating what you're doing with some real shark facts, I mean, some, some false shark facts too. Um, <laughs> In that I I don't think sharks are generally known for like um, grabbing depth charges and hitting them with their tail to attack the coast guard, but I, I'm pretty sure that's a thing you can do in the game. Uh, cool. So yeah, it is kind of like it 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 does go into sort of the Looney Tunes um, area where like you know that ability I mentioned where you can like bite something and then use your tail to whack it and use it as a projectile like they're saying like well if you do it with a swordfish it becomes like a spear you know which is some classic cartoon logic which which i kind of love i love that they um you know they, they could have gone one way or the other right they could have made it very much like this is a game about being a real shark and i think that could have been cool too 
I mean, if it really was like a nature documentary game. Hours of nothing like, and then smelling blood. <laughs> towards the blood. I mean, I think there could have been something to that, but. No, I feel you. I mean, Tripwire, uh, we didn't really expect that from Tripwire from, from <laughs> Spine Killing Floor. So uh, it's totally fine to me that they went like, yeah, you can electrocute stuff with your bioelectric shark things which don't exist but they do here um and you can you know shoot shoot swordfish like cartoon spears like that's that's cool um it's you know it's kind of different just to have like here's a here's a single player 10 15 hour game there's a series of boss fights um you know there, there's kind of a humorous story to it um well i kind of i feel like that kind of experience where it isn't, uh, you know, New World, which you're supposed to sort of play for ages, yeah. and build up a character and get to level 60 and own it. You know, there, there's right right now, I guess, or, or I guess coming out in May, uh, or even compared to something like Cyberpunk, where you expect like 100 hours is the <laughs> minimum. You know, there's something pretty appealing to me about, like, yeah, be a shark for 15 hours and Chris Parnell cracks some jokes and, you know, you fight a sperm whale and, I could see it doing really well just on the basis of like it's different. There's not that many shark games. Um, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to be overwhelming. It's really pretty, um, and, it, and it playing it, you know, with the controller, it, it it felt pretty fun. You know, there's a, there's an amount of sort of auto locking on that there needs to be because it's otherwise it would be really hard to like control the body of a swimming shark and accurately aim at you know a fish you're trying to eat so it just seems fun you know cool i like it uh there's something yeah like you said very appealing about this 2015 era game here's an open world skills to work through and the kind of thing we probably would have criticized and been tired of uh, like the Ubisoft uh, open world of the early 2010s. <laughs> we we are just thirsty for a a game that ends and kind of art, articulates in that way. Just a satisfying weekend. Uh, yeah, weekend, exactly. Weekend game. Plus, uh, you, you start as a shark pup and he's really cute. He's very little and cute. Um, but then you get really big and scary. So... Uh, Side note, I can't find a vampire shark movie, but there is a type of shark that is referred to as a vampire shark um, or a or a uh, kind of substratus of shark. Um, see, here I was calling them, saying they weren't true to nature, and uh, now they've just proven me wrong. There's uh, a vampire shark. I, you know, and you know, I, I used to know a lot of shark facts, um, so I knew these existed, but I didn't know they were referred to as vampire sharks. Have you guys – go go ahead and Google cookie cutter shark. It's horrifying. Uh yeah. It just kind of sucks onto the side of a creature and just takes a perfect circle bite out of it. Uh, there's the goblin shark, which just looks just looks like sort of like the crypt keeper. If the crypt keep keeper was a shark, um, and these are descended. There's the Alaskan what is this Alaskan vampire shark descended from the whale shark. It looks like just a, I don't know why they call it the vampire shark. It doesn't look like, like a vampire I'm googling, at all. Googling everything because if it bites you, you die, and then you. <laughs> but you're you can, in a coffin so you just die of asphyxiation because you're a shark and you're in a coffin so it's not really that big of a concern <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are some horrifying creatures on google image searching yeah sharks are cool man sharks are cool and i think uh sounds like a surefire bet if you can make a decent game around sharks uh, yeah it's coming out may 22nd is that is that when Shark Week is? I don't know. That would be smart of them, wouldn't it? That would be very smart of them. Uh, <laughs> you can bet your ass they're going to pay for an ad or something, at least on the Discovery Channel. Is Discovery well, Channel still a channel? That's, I think that's not till July. So oh, they're, shucks. They're, they're preempting Shark Week. Okay. Shark game. Get out ahead yeah. of Shark Week. So May, May 22nd, it will be on the Epic Store and not Steam. Uh-oh. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Cool. Same with Chivalry, actually. That's in Triple that's Ayers, right. I guess. Happy, happy with their deal. So that's that's what's happening. Gotcha. Um, thanks for all just the big dump of previews, you two. Appreciate it. Did a bunch of work, and uh, now you can die. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how it works. And then we get resurrected for E or well, no, GDC packs E3. Yeah, yeah Evans uh, opens the Google Hangout and says the incantation <laughs> over your. 
<laughs> coffins and you rise again. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for us this week. You can always catch the PC Gamer Show weekly, Wednesday, Thursday-ish. Uh, uh, go to uh, youtube.com slash PC Gamer if you want the... It's not Our faces aren't going to be there, but there's a video version. Um, you can go to pcgamer.com slash tag slash podcast. For the audio version, links to the Spotify, the iTunes, the RSS feed, anchor.fm, and wherever else you like to listen to podcasts. Um, yeah, uh, things are kicking off, so expect plenty of uh, interesting discussions about games we cover um, as previews come out uh, pretty much nonstop for the next couple months and uh, reviews of upcoming games. It's going to be a busy one. Um, so yeah, until uh, next week, don't forget to... Play game, uh, game on.